Man, I spend a lot of time in front of a computer. But lately, I've been trying to prioritize maximum comfort while in front of those screens. You might have seen a video recently where I talked about mechanical keyboards, and they are really fun to use, and they are honestly a more comfortable typing experience all around. But what about the other device that you use to control your computer? Well, obviously we're talking about mice in this video, and in front of me are three different types of mice that try to really change up the established formula. It's Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody? And here are three crazy mice that I have been using recently and to be honest, I really like all of them. But why don't we start off with something a little more radical. After all, to change the established norm, sometimes you have to put that norm on its side. And that's exactly what this vertical mouse does. Now, this is an Anchor wireless uh, mouse and it does have a receiver that I have connected to the computer behind me, if you can see there. The reason why I'm using this Anchor mouse is because uh, it's the one that I've had lying around. I know that there are Logitech MX vertical mice out there that might be a little bit better suited for the types of applications we're about to talk about, but I'm more talking about the concept of a vertical mouse in this video, and this is a good example of one. The grip is substantially different, and the ergonomics do feel generally better, especially when your hand is at rest. After all, instead of having that overhand grip, you have more of a side grip, and there's a lot of wrist movement, but you can just sort of pinch the whole mouse using the tips of your fingers in order to have full control over it. You get your standard buttons, including the left and right clicks, the middle scroll reel that also clicks down as well. And you also get these back and forward buttons here where the thumb lies. Now, these are the only buttons that I feel like are a little bit tough to get to. Uh, you have to actually sort of change the orientation of your thumb there, and it does feel a little bit unnatural compared to the more natural feel of the entire mouse in general. And then finally, there is this DPI button up top. Now, generally for all of my mice, especially the ones that we're talking about in this video, I keep it around 1600 DPI, which is pretty standard. I use it for all of my applications, not only for casual browsing, but also for gaming and editing. Granted, this Anger Mouse doesn't have the best performance, uh, but again, we're just talking about the concept of a vertical mouse here. And to be honest, it's something that you have to get used to over time. And when it comes to gaming, I don't know if I could really just rely on something like this and things like Overwatch. The reason why is because the learning curve for something like this is actually a little bit steep. It's about as steep as the mouse itself. That was a terrible joke. No, but really, when you've been using a mouse the classical way for many, many years, something like this just feels very foreign, especially in video games where you are trying to be as comfortable as possible and do all of the movements that you're used to in order to succeed. And also, since the form factor is literally taller than all of the other mice that you might be used to, it does mean that yeah, I can knock it around a little bit too easily sometimes. So, vertical mice, obviously cool, obviously a different way of looking at a mouse in general, uh, but ultimately it is a radical change. So what about the types of mice that are taking the established formula and trying to perfect it in different ways? Well, that's when something like the glorious Model O comes into play. This is a very popular mouse that I am going to do a full review on at some point, but for now, we're just going to go through a couple of the reasons why this is already one of my favorite mice that I've ever used. You can already see it plain as day. There's this honey come design because Glorious PC Gaming Race, that's literally the name of the company, have been cutting out every bit of plastic that they possibly can to make this the lightest mouse that you might ever use. And it is super light. This thing comes in at only 67 grams. You can even see through the plastic here, uh, and I don't know, maybe some dust or something might get inside of here, but I'll do my best to keep it as clean as possible. But we'll talk a little bit more about the actual performance of this mouse in a future full review. The cord of the Glorious Model O uh, is called the Ascended Cord, and it's not just a braided cord. It actually has a bit more uh, room and give inside. Uh, it's almost as if it's like a piece of fabric that you can just sort of move around like a piece of clothing. There's plenty of length on it, which means that you don't have to worry about it snagging or pulling while you're trying to just get those kills in video games. The fact that it's really light changes up the established formula even if the grip is very classical. I know you're already looking at that RGB. Uh, it does have a number of different color patterns, but this is the glorious pattern uh, that also just works really well with that bearded man on the side. You have a standard layout for the mouse. Uh, the DPI button is at the top and you can change up the DPI just by pressing it and seeing the light on the bottom so you know what your DPI is based upon that color. Again, 1600 DPI, that's pretty standard for me. 
Just because it is a classic grip and it does fit quite nicely in my hand, especially with the sort of claw formation that I have here, uh, it doesn't mean it's any less comfortable than the other two offerings in this video. Uh, the main reason why it's still comfortable is because it is so light. I'm barely moving uh, anything here in order to actually swipe to the left, swipe to the right, go up and down. And also the clicks are really satisfying. They're about as satisfying as the colors that are pulsating from it right now. The tracking is top notch and I've had no problems with latency on here. Uh, so honestly, when you're taking a look at different types of mice, something like this doesn't change up too much about the established formula. It's just trying to minimize it as much as possible. And that is really uh, effective as well. But what about keeping this particular grip, but just changing up a couple of very key portions of it? Well, that's when we have our final mouse and actually the sponsor of this video, which is the Quadraclix RBT. RBT stands for right above touch. And as you can see, it has a very different design despite having what might look like a familiar form. RBT is an interesting name for this mouse because some people call it the rabbit mouse and for good reason. When you have your hands on this particular mouse, your two fingers, index and middle finger, actually rise up because you're not clicking the top portions of these two buttons. The clicks are actually down here. So it's not about the tips of the fingers, it's about this fleshy part right down here uh, that actually come down quite naturally. It doesn't sound like they would, but they really do. That means that when you're in your resting position, the tips of your fingers don't have to tense up so much because it's ready for the next click. Instead, they literally just rest there, a little bit like bunny ears on the mouse. And because you have a bit of a grip here using these two fingers, you don't actually have to claw the mouse in order to have an effective grip and movement with it. The tracking is also really nice, so you could just sort of glide your hand on it. You just have to make sure you're not actually pressing down on the keys while you're doing so. So this one has a little bit of a learning curve as well, and it might be just as much as the vertical mouse, but this one feels a little bit more comfortable and it makes a lot more sense in games, in editing applications, and just in general, because the grip is more or less classical. It's not radically different like the vertical mouse, but instead you're just changing up where you're actually pressing down. And honestly, there's a lot of benefits to a grip like this. Quadraclix claims that a mouse like this allows you to have a more open palm, which is a lot more comfortable, and honestly, I really do agree. While it might take some time to get used to the actual button clicks themselves, overall, everything else is just exactly where you need it to be, and with my hand actually spread out a little bit more, it makes it so that when I'm idle, my hand is not straining whatsoever. This is honestly one of those things that you have to feel in order to believe, because what you notice the most when using this alongside more conventional mice is that when you use the conventional mice, and even with the glorious Model O that I just talked about a minute ago, I noticed that my hand is more tensed up because it is getting used to uh, being ready for the next clicks or doing those claw grips uh, in order to move them around more effectively. The cord is braided and again, quite long, doesn't get tangled very easily, and it means that you're able to move around very effectively. And as far as flashiness is concerned, only the logo, the RBT logo down on the bottom actually lights up, but it does so to tell you what setting you're on for your DPI settings. What I find so crazy about this mouse is that even though it feels radically different, I'm no less effective at everything that I'm doing. So this kind of design actually minimizes on the fatigue you might feel after very long, let's say, game sessions or editing sessions. And since the buttons rise up like this and your hand is a little bit more spread out, there's a little bit more airflow involved. And again, when you're idle, the fingers are actually resting. The entire hand is in a much more comfortable position, which will help in reducing the kinds of problems people have when they're computing all the time. Things like carpal tunnel. So ultimately we have a few different ways of actually changing up the thing you do most, one of the things you do most on a computer, and that's controlling the mouse cursor. You know, it's funny, you don't really think about the kinds of mice that you use on a computer. You just get something that might be reliable, wireless perhaps, or maybe you have a gaming mouse, uh, especially for casual usage every single day. It's not something you think about a whole lot, but thanks to Quadraclix for providing the RBT mouse. And uh, it's something that made me rethink how I feel about mice in general. And as a result, I have tried three different ways of actually changing up the way I use a mouse. I think that the vertical mouse is the only one that I would say I'm not going to use very often. These two though, the RBT and the Glorious Model O, they both have such great merits that I'm using them on the daily for the different laptops and computers that I have in my general workflow. 
So if you want to try any of these mice, I actually have affiliate links down in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. And if you use those links, you're actually helping me out a little bit. So that would be really great of you to check them out using the links below. What kind of mice do you use, especially when it comes to gaming applications? Maybe you're a big video editor and you like to have macros on your mice for both of those applications. Uh, but in general, I just want to know what kinds of things you end up using on the daily. Let us know in the comment sections down below. We can have that discussion and then you can stick around for even more here on my channel. I'm almost there to 100,000 subscribers at the time of recording this video. So hopefully we can celebrate all of that together very, very soon. From there, you can drop some likes on my videos and then get into the comment sections like I mentioned before. Until my next video, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one and I'll just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.